the reason that the VP pick matters this time. And I have been a longtime advocate of the notion that the VP pick does not matter nearly at all. It matters this time because everyone assumes that Joe Biden is at the very least not going to run for re-election and probably will not finish his first term. He himself has called himself a transitional candidate. He is obviously in a state of cognitive decline. It is perfectly obvious to everyone. And at this point, President Trump should simply ignore Joe Biden and go directly after Kamala Harris and say, this is the next president of the United States, not Joe Biden. And Joe Biden made her the issue. See, this is a real strategic blunder by Biden. I'm frankly amused and astonished by the number of people in the conventional political class who have suggested that this was the safest pick. This was the, the pick that made the most sense. It makes no sense at all. None. Biden's entire campaign is predicated on the assumption that Joe Biden is basically a return to normalcy. He is a non-threatening, elderly, grandfatherly character who is not going to threaten anything about the way America was running before President Trump became president. He's not a radical. He's not transformative. He's just a dude. And because he's just a dude and kind of an elderly doddering dude at that, you don't have to worry about Joe Biden. You don't have to worry about chaos in the streets. You don't have to worry about the crazy tweets coming out of the White House. All you have to do is simply go about your business and Joe Biden will have your back. That was the Biden campaign in a nutshell. And so you should focus when you go into the voting booth on his opponent. You should focus on the volatility and the and the kind of craziness of, of Donald Trump's presidency when he chooses to vote. So when he picked a VP, he should have underscored those strengths, right? What he should have done is he should have picked somebody like Amy Klobuchar. He should have picked somebody who was inherently non-threatening, somebody that the American public widely perceives to be somewhat moderate. Instead, he decided to cave to the Twitterati. And he made this mistake for a couple of reasons. First, he decided very early on that he was going to pick a woman. Well, as soon as you say that you're basically going to pick a VP based on tokenistic concerns, and let's face it, that is a tokenistic concern, whether your VP is a woman. Okay, that, that that does not say anything about her character. It does not say anything about her politics. Nikki Haley is a woman. The, the idea that this is a criteria for picking the VP is the, is the sex to which they belong is a bizarre idea on its face. And it becomes even more bizarre when you realize that the Democratic Party platform at this point is that women don't exist and a man can be a woman. <laughs> so as my friend Matt Walsh has pointed out, it's very bizarre that the media are championing first female black VP pick by a Democrat, it's just incredible, incredible stuff. They don't even believe women exist. So I'm wondering what's so historic about a, an individual with the cervix, as the media might put it, being selected as the VP candidate. They can't, they, they literally say there are no, no differences between men and women to the point where a man can be a woman. But it's very historic that Kamala Harris is in fact a woman. In any case, Joe Biden early on signaled he was going to pick a woman. Well, this boxed him in, but it didn't box him in that much because there, there was still a bevy of qualified women who are out there. Then, because he had already caved to okay, I have to pick somebody who is representative of a particular demographic population in the United States. Then he was pushed into, okay, it has to be a, a black woman. It has to be a woman of color. Okay, so he, he sort of futzed between black woman and woman of color. And finally, he settled on Kamala Harris. And she was probably the worst available pick. There, there are some other people who are up for this thing. Right? Val Demings in Florida, largely anonymous, but at least not disliked by the American public. He had Karen Bass in California, who's kind of a communist, but again, not very well known and at least had significant support in the black community as the longtime head of the Congressional Black Caucus. And then you had Kamala Harris, a woman so deeply unpopular that she dropped out of the presidential race before her voters in California even had a chance to vote on her. She was registering at 7% in the California primaries. Kamala Harris was such a bad candidate that after jumping to the lead early on in the race, based again on those Twitter blue check marks, checking particular boxes, woman, black, well, she jumped to the top of the race and then she immediately flamed out because it turns out that she's garbage at this. She's a terrible politician. She's manipulative. She's Machiavellian. She has very few principles. And what principles she does have are radical. And that's who Joe Biden chose. Is that supposed to make people feel sanguine about the future of the country? Is that supposed to make people feel comforted and solidified in their belief that he is, in fact, a moderate who's going to carry America on gentle waves to better days? Is that really the, the pick that makes a lot of sense? The answer, of course, is no. And so the media have been attempting to spin this thing as though Harris is a moderate. This is an incredible attempt. It really is. Because as we will examine throughout today's show and in the coming days, Kamala Harris is not only not a moderate, she's extraordinarily radical in her policies. She's been rated one of the most liberal senators in the United States Senate. GovTrack.us rated her as the fourth most liberal senator in the United States Senator in the United States Senate, just behind Bernie Sanders and Kirsten Gillibrand. She voted with Bernie Sanders 92% of the time while she was in the Senate. Okay, that, that is not a moderate. And she's not a pragmatist either. She is, she's a hardcore leftist who is a pragmatic only in the sense that she will do nearly anything to get ahead politically. She will switch her positions. She will flip on a dime. She will make accusations that are 
really ugly about people simply to push herself forward. If I'm Joe Biden, I'm getting a food taster today. Today. Do not have Kamala Harris in the same room when you're eating lunch, Joe Biden. For your own preservation, at the very least, you might want some life insurance. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.